Okay, what we have here is a table with a lot of blanks. And what students are being asked to do is to use the clues provided to them in each row to complete the information for that element. So we have indium, which is I in for its symbol. Uh, it has an atomic number. Let's see, I need you all to help me out here. Um, Kellen, what is indium's atomic number? 49. So how many protons does it have? 49. So if, has, if there are 49 protons, how many electrons? 49. Now, what is this mass number rounded to the nearest whole number? 115. So how do you find the number of neutrons? Which is? 66. Yeah, it's got 66. So 115 minus 49 is 100 and, or no, just 66. Okay. Pick someone. Sawyer, you're up. What element has 35 protons? Bromine. What is bromine symbol? Br. What is its atomic number? 35. We have 35 protons. How many electrons does it have? 35. Uh, what is its mass number rounded to the nearest whole number? 80. And so how do you calculate the number of neutrons, Sawyer? 35 from 80. What is that? Forty-five. Okay, good. All right, pick a victim. I mean, a volunteer, Sawyer. Who? Where are you, Tristan? All right, go for it. You have eighteen electrons. So, if there's eighteen electrons, how many protons are there? Eighteen. If the proton number is eighteen, what is the atomic number? And so, what element is that? Argon. What is the symbol? AR. Uh, what is its mass number rounded to the nearest whole number? 40. So how do you calculate the number of protons? 40 minus 18, which is 22. Good job. Who you got for the next one? Chris. We got a mass, oh, a mass number of 131 that's rounded to the nearest whole number. So what element would that be? It's it's pronounced xenon, so xenon. It's okay. You likely never had to pronounce these before. What is the symbol for xenon? X e. What is its atomic number? Fifty four. What is its proton number? Its electron number. Okay. It has a mass number of one hundred and thirty one, and it has an atomic number of fifty four. How do you find the neutron number? 131 minus 54, which is 77. Okay. I'm trusting you. I'll double check. 131 minus 54. Yep. Okay. Who you got for the last one, Chris? Garrett. Garrett. Is he here? He's not here. Nice try. Trey. Trey. Now, James. On Hold on. Listen. On your tests and things, you were writing Trey. And I got to know the real name. So put James until I get that. So Trey, what is, this is my favorite one. What's the name of it? Thorium. What is this atomic number? Protons. Electrons. Mass number. So how do you calculate the number of uh, neutrons? And which is? There you go. Good job. You guys are going to have an assignment that's going to be very similar to this uh, coming up for this weekend. If you can do this, you can do that assignment. This is very, very important material for you guys to really know how to do because it is honestly the foundation for everything else that we'll do here. Okay. So what I'd like to do is pick up where we left off where my computer lost power yesterday. And I want to continue talking about isotopes. All right. Now, if I can go back up, here's what I was hoping to do with you guys. Um, I 
I was telling you that there are three different types of carbon. The first one is carbon-12, and I'm going to show you how they got that number. Isotopes are named after their element dash mass number. So you got carbon-12. Now, because it is carbon, it will always have a proton number of six. That will never, ever change. But the neutron number could change. Six plus six is 12. We call it carbon-12. Now, look at the next one. If it's carbon, what is its atomic number? What number of protons? What will it always be? Six. And the new number of neutrons is seven. So what is six plus seven? 13. So what is this isotope of carbon called? Carbon 13. And then we have a radioactive form of carbon. It has six protons, but eight neutrons. So what is six plus eight? 14. So what is this carbon isotope's name? Carbon 14. When you are saying the name of the element, it is the name dash mass number. That's how you actually pronounce it. And that's how you've uh, formulated. It. Now, there's this next part is, again, important for the entire school year. So write this down. This is how you write the symbols, okay? Now, this is carbon. So what is the symbol according to the periodic table for carbon? The one or two letter symbol. That's what that is. What is it? Capital or lowercase? That matters. So I'm just going to put them in different colors so we can tell them apart. And here's how you actually write them, okay? You put the mass number in the top left corner. And then you put the atomic number in the bottom left corner. So I want you guys to do something for me. To show me that you know how to do this. I want you to go to the column that you guys just did in the table with symbols. We got indium, bromine, ar argon, xenon, and thorium. I want you to add the numbers that will go. I'm going to just move these over so I have room for them, okay? So I got I, N, B, R, A, R. X, E, and T, H. I'll do indium with you. Indium had a mass number of 115. Whoops. So you put 115 here, and then you put 49 down there. I want you to do that with the other four. This is important to know for the rest of the school year. It's very important you know how to do this. All right, here's what you should have for bromine. Argon, xenon, and thorium. It's all, it's, there's no, let me put it, there's no problem solving brain power with this. It's all about formatting. You have to know how to write them out. And I certainly hope none of you did this. Don't do this, okay? Wrong. 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 Here's something you may have done. Wrong. Wrong. If it's capital, make it capital. If it's lowercase, make it lowercase. Yes. So Argon would be eight sigma. Oh, I put twenty-two for some reason. I was looking the wrong row. Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Yes, it would be eighteen. Good eye. Okay. Hopefully, I don't have any other mistakes. We good. Okay, you might want to just close your books, but you will need them later today. So to recap, isotopes. 
They're atoms of the same element. They have the same number of protons and electrons. A different number of neutrons. So I do have a couple more examples for you. And we're going to do potassium. Okay. Do you guys know what the symbol for potassium is? It's not P. It's not PO. It's K. In Latin, the word for potassium is with a K. All right. So, Trey, I like you to help me out with this. If they're all potassium, what letter will they all be? We can put K in for now. All right. Trey, now because they're all potassium, how many protons do they all have? You can take a peek in your book or on the periodic table. Uh, not 20, 19. So if there are 19 protons, how many electrons are there? There are 19. Go and fill them in. And Trey, which of those numbers represents the atomic number technically? I know the 19, but is it the proton number or the electron number? Technically, which one is it? Does the atomic, huh? No, electron, the reason why it's technically protons is as you guys will learn next unit, the electron number can change. So you don't want to depend on something that can change. Proton number is solid. It won't change. So what does the atomic number reflect? The proton number. So what is the atomic number for potassium? 19, 19, 19. Okay. Um... What would the mass number be? With these, look at these isotopes, what would it be? These are weird isotopes. You got 20, 21, and 22. No, those numbers represent the atomic number. So this is a weird one. How many neutrons would potassium 20 have? It has 19 electrons, or excuse me, 19 protons and a mass number of 20. Yeah, weird. How about potassium 21? Now about potassium 22? Three. Okay. Just a for instance, yes. Those are two, I just made them up. I just want to see if you guys can do it. Okay, two more things to talk about, then I'm going to give you guys your assignment, okay? Here we go. The mass of atoms and subatomic particles. Do you recall what is used in the metric system to determine the mass of anything? Meters measures distance and length. Liters measures volume. What measures mass? Grams. Very good. Well, there's a problem with this. Atoms are way too small to measure with grams. Heck, they're way too small to measure with picograms which is a trillionth of a gram. So we had to come up with something new. 
atoms are so small. An emphasis on the so small. Grams or a fraction of a gram are not suitable to measure their mass. So scientists had to come up with something new specifically for atoms. So they invented the atomic mass unit or AMU. This unit of measurement is specific to the size of atoms and their subatomic particles. It is used to measure atomic and subatomic mass. We can't use grams. Grams are way too big. Way too big. AMUs are based on carbon 12. This is where they created it from. So carbon 12 is 12 AMUs. So when you hear the mass number, that is basically how many atomic units it is. So when you guys were creating your data tables, when you walked in today, uh, I indium has a AMU of 115. Bromine is 80. Argon is 40. Xenon is 131. And thorium is 232 atomic mass units. Now, as far as the masses are concerned. For atoms, the mass number, which is hopefully you remember, is protons plus neutrons, is measured in A M U. So, I want to give you some easy ones. Let's do hydrogen. Hydrogen has, well, you all tell me. Take a look at hydrogen on the periodic table. What is its atomic number? One. It is one proton. What is the number of electrons, then, if it has one proton? One, I want you to take, before you tell me the neutron number, can you tell me the mass number? Look at your periodic table. You will never have to memorize these numbers. Heck, I told you that when I had to take a test to be certified to teach this class, they gave me basically two things. They gave me a calculator and they gave me a periodic table. If I had to have those, you definitely have to have those too. So don't ever feel like you have to memorize anything. I will tell you that as you use the periodic table every day in this class, you will start to memorize things. Like It's like watching SpongeBob. If I asked you to tell me every character's name, you didn't have to study that. You didn't have to like work hard to remember that. It's just from repetition, watching the show every day. It just happens. If you watch your favorite team play every week, you just memorize their names. Same is going to go with chemistry. So I'm not going to force you to memorize anything. I'm going to let it just happen naturally. So you will eventually memorize this. What is hydrogen's mass number rounded to the nearest whole number? One. So how many neutrons does it have? Zero. So when I ask you it's AMUs, hydrogen is one AMU. Let's try something a little more kicking it, okay? Copper. It's its symbol is C U. 
what is its uh proton number? Look around, try to find it. See you. It's like a scavenger hunt right now. 29. If it has 29 protons, how many electrons does it have? 29. Skip the neutron number for now. What is its mass number around the nearest whole number? 64. So what is the number of neutrons? 35. So is it 35 AMU or is it 64 AMU? 64. Okay. So that is how you measure an atom. A copper atom is 64 AMU. A hydrogen atom is 1 AMU. A thorium atom is 232 AMU. Yes? So does that mean like one proton is one AMU? That's what I'm getting to, Varun. That's my next thing. So let's do the mass of subatomic particles. Varun's question is exactly where I was getting to. A proton is one AMU. A neutron is one AMU. An electron, you're going to love this, 0 0.0005 AMU. It is so small, we don't even factor it. That's a, that is one fifty thousandth of an AMU. We're not going to we're not going to consider that. Electrons are so small, you don't factor them into the mass. But that is the mass of the particles. Okay. And now, the very last thing to do, and I'm going to let you, set you guys off on your own to complete your work, whether it's classwork or homework, will be up to you. This is going to be atomic mass, the last part for today. And you will need a calculator for this. There's no question about it. Unless you are a math whiz, mental math whiz, you're going to need a calculator. Now, there are, I'm going to go to Google here. I'm going to try to find something after I actually type this first. There are different forms of the same element that are across the universe. And I'm going to focus on carbon. There's carbon found in your body. There's carbon found throughout space. But as I indicated to you, there's three main types of carbon. Carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14 you need to be able to identify which one is the most abundant, which one is the second most abundant, which one is the rarest. That is how we find these numbers. These numbers, if you look on the mass, these little right here, they're typically decimals. Like I'm looking at Lorentzian, 262.110. Carbon is 12.011. I'm going to show you how they get those numbers now. Hold on. The weighted average mass of the isotopes of an element is the atomic mass. Here's the key. This one's really important. Um, different isotopes have differing abundances in nature. Now, I also teach biology, AP bio, let a lot of you know. What do you think is more common on planet Earth? Redheads or brunettes? Brunette, dark hair is most common hair kind on Earth. That's not to say that redheads are 
like extinct as we wouldn't phrase it that way but they're much rarer they're both humans redheads and brunettes are both humans but one trait is less common than the other the same goes with isotopes you could have one version of a of carbon like carbon 12 be everywhere and then you could have carbon 13 and 14 be really really hard to find and so what you do is you basically average out their mass with their percentage and you'll eventually get the mass number. So I'm going to go to Google to show you. I'm not going to make this up. And I'm going to type in average abundance of carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. So let me switch over Zoom here. Let's go here. Okay. Abundance of carbon 12. All right. So carbon 12 is the most abundant of the two stable isotopes, carbon-13 being the other, um, not just on Earth, but basically in the universe. So I want you to write this number down. I want you to write carbon-12, mass number, 12 AMU. But here's the important part. All of you better, you should have. I'm not going to say better. It's kind of threatening. All of you should have gotten a decent grade in Algebra 1. How do you write a percentage as a number that you can actually use in multiplication and division? You have to write it as a decimal. You need to write 98.93% as 0.9893. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to switch back from Zoom. Here's what I want you to do. For carbon-12. We're going to say mass, 12 AMU. Percent abundance, what was it, 98.93? You have to write that it's decimal, 0. 0.9893. And then for its mass contribution, this is where your calculator comes in, part one of your calculations. I need you to do 12 AMU times 0.9893. Tell me what you get. All of you need to practice this. Practice it now so you know how to do it on your test. Round your answer to the nearest... Um, hundreds place. What'd you get, Trey? I did too. Okay. So I showed you what to do. Now I want you guys, and I'll help you out with the number. I want you to also do this with carbon 13 and carbon 14. And I'm going to wait for you to do this. Please pay attention. I'm going to wait for you to find the answers like you just found for carbon 12. What I just highlighted, I'm going to, I want to wait until you find those numbers for 13 and 14. So in order for you to do 13 and 14, the first thing you need to do is you need to write down their mass. That's the easy part. What is the mass of carbon 13? It's in the name. 13 AMU. What is the mass of carbon 14? 14 AMU. That's easy. But now you need my help. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to type in the abundance, and you need to write this down. Abundance of carbon-13. There are two stable isotopes in the natural world, 12 and 13. It is about, I, I don't want about, I want like the actual abundance. Okay, so yeah, I see here, it says 1.1%. So let's go with that, 1.1%. And then carbon-14, which I'll talk about on Monday, it's radioactive. Ooh, that is tiny. One times 10 is the negative 10th. That's gonna be point zero. Point nine zeros in a 10. You got to do it. I'll do it with you.
1.1% is 0 0.011. And then here's this one's going to be a lot of fun. Hold on, let me double check that. Oh, boy. Okay. It's not going to be nine zeros. It's going to be 11 zeros followed by a one. Lovely. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one. Wait. Ten. Ten. Ten zeros in a one. All right. Thirteen AMU times point zero one one. Do that math. Write down what you get. I got point one four three. And then we have the fun one. 14 AMU times point zero 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 zero. What's that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten times fourteen. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I got eight zeros. One, four. Okay. There we go. We got all three numbers. Now you just need to add up those three numbers. What'd you guys get? Give me the whole thing. And then I got five zeros, one four. I want you to look at carbon in your periodic table. Twelve point zero one one, pretty darn close. We're off by two thousands of a point. So this is how they actually calculate it. I want to recap this. What this means, everybody, that in the entire universe, on Earth, on Mars, everywhere, of all the carbon that is out there, 98.93% of it is carbon-12, by far the most common type of carbon. 1.1% of it is carbon-13. And... <laughs> Point zero 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 one percent of it is going to be carbon fourteen. Now on Tuesday, I'm going to teach you that that form of carbon is radioactive, and we use it to uh, calculate how old the remains of living things are. All of you have radioactive carbon inside of you. So when I say this number, it is very small, but it is something. It's radioactive, and it's inside all of you. When you die, it begins to decay. And scientists have learned how to calculate how long a living thing's remains, like its skeletons, its bones, have been just lying there in the earth by calculating how much carbon-14 is left. It's called carbon dating, radiometric dating. I'm going to teach you how to do that on Tuesday, or at least what it is. But for now, I'm going to stop the lesson. I'm going to pass out your homework. It's very similar to what you did when you walked in today. It is due on Tuesday.